Six years ago, I was in Upper Michigan in a little town called Toivola. My mom told me about a preacher on television, um, Andrew Walmack. I've been a Christian all my life, but the, the churches I was in, we never heard of the grace of God or the forgiveness of the Lord was not emphasized, neither the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then my parents started to listen to Andrew Walmack on the television. I watched some of his shows and then I ordered a bunch of teachings and the next thing I knew, I signed up to come to his Bible college. One day, my parents called me and said, would you like to come with us to a Gospel Truth Seminar in Alabama uh, with Andrew Womack? I, I just knew in my heart that the Holy Spirit was saying, yes, you need to go, you're gonna get what you're looking for. And so after I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, you know, I knew going to Karis Bible College was the next step. Coming into the school was an awesome experience. We had a class exercise to go ahead and pray in the Spirit and just listen to the Lord and write down what the Lord is speaking to you. And it was in that class where um, the Lord just really gave me a film strip of a whole bunch of neat things that would happen in my life. And at the very end, the really strong word, just autumn is the one, be yourself. So I remember there was a, a new guy that comes to our school, and he was very, very, very excited about being at CBC. You know, I wasn't even interested in the time. I was just here for God, and uh, it was a real um, challenging word for me at the time because I really thought, boy, she's, she's out of my league. I was just a sponge, absorbing all the teaching, and I was getting radically changed. Autumn and I ended up hanging out a lot. A lot of our friends were the same, so we'd all get together and go on hikes and do different things, skiing, which made it worse. In that circle of friends also was a, a real good friend, um, David Forguston. I was standing next to David and the Lord, real strong inside, said, you'll be helping this man and, and you'll just be a part of what he's doing. One day, the television department manager got up before the student body and said, we need to take some volunteers. And the Holy Spirit just put like a big red arrow right over that guy. It says, go to that man after school and you need to volunteer. After a few weeks of volunteering, I, they let me loose with a camera by myself, which was a big deal. And I got to film a praise and worship event. And I, as I was coming in, I rounded the corner with the camera. And I knew in my heart, all of a sudden, the Lord just said to me that I was going to be fundraising for missionaries and ministries all over the world through video and newsletters and all different types of media. So, and once I heard that word, you know, I had a purpose, I had a, a place in, and, and I knew what my destiny was. So I went through two years of school and graduated in 2007 without any hint at all that um, that Autumn, you know, may like me. And I stayed here in Calder Springs and I worked for the television ministry here for Andrew full time and I loved it. I mean, I, I got every bit of experience that I could get from here. So then I went off uh, after school to work at a dude ranch. It's called Latigo Ranch. It's a great place. I was a real cowboy. I started trying to you know, find ways to stay in touch with Autumn. And I thought, well, one way is obvious Facebook. The next day, you know, and then months, she didn't, she didn't respond. So the only thing that really kept me strong, holding to the word that he gave me is that, you know, I didn't have to do anything, really. I just had to be myself. You know, just when things were so perfect, in my mind when I thought, you know, I had a great full-time job and I was reaching the world through Andrew's ministry, the Lord impressed upon me, just start praying in tongues. So after a couple of days of this, I was like, Lord, you know, you, I don't, I don't know why you're wanting me to pray in tongues this much, you know, what, what am I praying out? What am I praying to you about? And he just said, oh, don't worry about it. You're just praying out your future. I'll let you know later. <laughs> so the more I prayed in tongues, the more just dissatisfied that I, I got here in Colorado Springs and with my job. Then I heard Andrew's teaching about holy dissatisfaction and I thought, oh, maybe this is what, I mean, maybe there's a change coming up. 
but God will give you a supernatural direction. And on the flip side of this, did you know the reason that some of you are not fulfilled is because there is a holy dissatisfaction on the inside of you. I remember I was talking to David and Judith Forgeston one day. He just said that the Lord was telling me that God had somebody that was gonna love me unconditionally. And at that moment, I knew Jeff, Jeff was it. I finally, I said, okay, Lord, you know, I'm so frustrated. I'm tired of trying to, to work things out on my own. Will you just please tell me what it is? And within one week of me giving my total surrender of my heart, finally, to the Lord, he told me I was gonna marry Jeff and I was gonna go to India. <laughs> Autumn all of a sudden decided she wanted to go and help the Forgestons in India also. David and Russ, his dad, they left right after the day after they graduated to go to India to be missionaries. And then soon after that, Judith and David got married and she joined them in India. And at this point, that's when I started to help them with their newsletters. We started talking more and we finally ended up hanging out. Our relationship progressed um, pretty quickly. She came up to visit me at the ranch a lot. I knew I had heard from the Lord, but I was still, you still got to get to know somebody and have a relationship built before you could get married. But the Lord had been preparing me and speaking to me and I got to the place where I was ready to get married and I wanted to marry him and I didn't want to be apart from him anymore. We had gone home to Upper Michigan for Thanksgiving. Autumn had come to and she met the family and it was all good. She left early and I was still there so I thought, well, I'm just going to buy the ring now. So after Thanksgiving, I flew back here to Colorado and very nervous because that day I was thinking, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say, let's go to the Hungry Bear restaurant. I was so hungry and starving. <laughs> and so I said to him, I was like, hey, do you want to go eat at the Hungry Bear? I was like, yeah. And then we finally get to the restaurant. And, and I go underneath the little arch and turn around and Autumn, will you marry me? I was like, yes. But then I was like, is that what I'm supposed to say right now? I, I can't even know what's going on. <laughs> And she looked at me and I saw this little bit of a smile. And then I just said, well, yes, of course. So now I can tell you this story that, you know, the Lord has, has that told me the first year of Bible college. And it was just amazing to see how he had the even bigger walk of faith. It really, really blessed her and, and it really blessed me to see that, gosh, God, I heard God's voice. So after we got engaged, we set the wedding date for about three months later, and we got married in the mountains of Colorado in a lodge. It was just the perfect wedding. Right after that, on our honeymoon, uh, we decided that we needed to go to India, like right away. And so we bought tickets while we were on our honeymoon. And I helped the Forgestons out and see if this is really where God has called us. We stayed with the Forgestons there in India, and they were getting all the stuff for the Bible college ready. and. And we went there and I really expected this, this like dream world or something. It was like, I'm going on the mission field. Everything's supposed to be perfect then. I'm, I'm never going to get sick. I'm always going to have plenty of money and I'll never worry about money at least. And so, and we found out that it's not that way. You know, everyone's different and, and it's very dirty and trash everywhere. It was, it was a whole new experience for us. So after we got back from our first trip in India, um, we went and worked at the ranch that I was working at. But during that time, the India just got stronger inside of us, the, the draw there to go back. We were trusting God for the finances to go and we'd saved up some, but we still needed some more. And, and uh, halfway through the summer at the, at the ranch, we had received a, a great donation that gave us enough to get tickets and live for a while in India, so we thought, boy, this is it, we need to go. Once we were over there, Jeff had some roles at the Bible College to do. I really didn't have as much to do. The Forgestons had bought a, a video camera that I could use, and, and Jeff too, if he was interested. And she was training me on the camera and how to do certain things and what not to do. And, and he just took off with it, and he loved it. And we bought a Mac, you know, an iMac, and and got some great software, and we, we started building them this promotional video. I think about the story, and I think about 
the different shots and angles that we could do, but Jeff is more thinking about the technical side, making sure that the, the video looks good, that the, we've got audio. And the, the teamwork was just phenomenal. So we made a video for the Fordisons, a, a promotional fundraiser, just to show all their partners everything that they had been doing. So the video turned out to be a real hit. It came back to the States and went to all the Forguson's partners and Andrew and even the, the television producer here at AWM um, watched it and really was excited about it. They had so many partners call them and write them and say, wow, we never understood what you're really doing until this video. We get all your newsletters, but, but now that we see, see it visually, we know what you're doing. So at Christmas time, while we were in India, we found out that we were I was pregnant with our first son, Isaac. So our time in India was coming to an end. Our visa was up and we had bought one-way tickets, so it was a little bit of a challenge. You know, we didn't, we didn't have a real strong partner base in our ministry, so we just kind of relied on um, gifts here and there. He showed us what to do. He gave us wisdom. We sold the iMac and there was a gift came in and it, it was literally just enough to get back. We came back to Colorado Springs and we applied for job after job. It was a bit of a challenge. Autumn was pregnant and I didn't have a job and there wasn't anything really lined up. And um, we were coming to the end of our finances. We came to CBC to hear a guest speaker. And, and this guy behind me kind of said, hi, and how are you guys doing? And hey, do you need work? And I was like, yes, he does. <laughs> Since then, now I'm helping him develop a a uh, cabinet company. We were so thankful for that job because it sustained us while to be here in Calder Springs for a while and we could go to our home church again and get fed by the in the word and and we had our son Isaac in August of 2010. So God brings this totally amazing little gift into our life. You know, we got I got to see our first child son Isaac born I didn't have to work and I could stay home and get used to being a mom. And Boy, he's, he's a blessing. He spoils us. We're, he's so good and he sleeps all night and we enjoy him so much. One day as I, as I was visiting the television department and catching up with everybody, the manager of the television show came up to me and just was telling me about how excited everybody at CBC was, all the second year students, about his media class. and. Finally, after so many years, he was saying a dream was coming true for him about opening up a whole third year course just so the students can learn media. I had all these desires for helping ministries through media and someday a school would be really cool to see. It's just devoted just to that. So this winter, Stephen Bradford gives us a call and has us come into the office. He asked Autumn and I about, this media school is happening. Would you be able to be directors of it? It was a total new thing and we'd have to develop the flow and, and he would kind of be the leader over the whole thing. And, and once everything was finalized and cleared, we have been working tirelessly on <laughs> getting the school ready for the next year. And we have so many students already that are so excited. So I was just amazed at how God opened up this door, you know, just through this little video we did all the way over in India. that We had no idea it was just going to turn into such a... Uh, a big thing. We've been developing all the courses and getting the, the all the instructors in. We have awesome, awesome TV uh, department and people that have, have done amazing things uh, for huge corporations and Hollywood and different things and these people are going to be our teachers. The Media School is going to be a series of workshops where the students are going to be able to help ministries fundraise and raise support for them while they're here at school before they even go out. And we're going to be the coaches during class time and bring people through projects and building videos for ministries, websites and newsletters. Looking back at what God spoke to me right at the beginning of the first year of Bible College and just a couple things out of that film strip I've seen come to pass already, there's still a lot more to come. You know, just when you think it couldn't get any better, God opens up a new door and does amazing things in your life. And now I'm able to take everything I've learned and share it with students at the Karis Bible College. And it's just amazing to see how I'm able to reproduce the things that they've poured into me. I'm able to pour into them and they're able to 
to expand and grow ministries all over the world.